Chapter Two, Book Four of Rookwood. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Paul Curran. Rookwood by William Harrison Ainsworth. Book Four, Chapter Two. Tom King. Grim. How gloriously the sun sets to-night. More. When I was a boy, my favourite thought was that I should live and die like yonder glorious orb. It was a boyish thought. Grim. True, Captain. The Robbers. Peace, based calumniators! exclaimed Tom King, aroused from his toothpick reverie by these aspersions of the best part of creation. Peace, I say. None shall dare abuse that dear devoted sex in the hearing of their champion, without pricking a lance with him in their behalf. What do you, either of you, who abuse woman in that wholesale style, know of her? Nothing. Less than nothing. And yet, you venture, upon your paltry experience, to lift up your voices and decry the sex. Now, I do know her, and upon my own experience avouch that, as a sex, woman, compared with man, is as angel to a devil, as a sex, woman, is faithful, loving, self-sacrificing. We, tis that make her otherwise, we, selfish, exacting, neglectful men, we teach her indifference, and then blame her apt scholarship. We spoil our own hand, and then blame the cards. No abuse of women in my hearing. Give me a glass of grog, Dick. The sex, three times three, and here's a song for you in the bargain saying which in a mellow plaintive tone tom gave the following pledge of the highwayman come fill up a bumpers to eve's fairest daughters who have lavished their smiles on the brave and the free toast the sweethearts of dudley hind wilmot and waters whate'er their attraction whate'er their degree pledge pledge in a bumper each kind-hearted maiden whose bright eyes were dimmed at the highwayman's fall, who stood by the gallows with sorrow or laden, bemoaning the fate of the gallant Duval. Here's to each lovely lass chance of war bringeth near one, whom with manner impassioned we tenderly stop, and to whom, like the lover addressing his dear one, in terms of entreaty the question we pop. How oft, in such case, rosy lips have proved sweeter than the rosiest book Bright eyes saved a bright ring, while that one other kiss has brought off a repeater, and the bead as a favour, the favourite string. With our hearts readily rifled, each pocket we rifle, with the pure flame of chivalry stirring our breasts. Life's risk for our mistress's praise is a trifle, and each purse as a trophy our homage attests. Then toss off your glasses to all girls of spirit, ne'er with names or with number, your memories vex. Our toast, boys, embraces each woman of merit, and for fear of omission, we'll drink the whole sex. Well, replied Dick, replenishing King's rummer while he laughed heartily at his ditty, I shan't refuse your toast, though my heart don't respond to your sentiments. Ah, Tom, the sex you praise so much will, I fear, prove your undoing. Do as you please, but curse me if I ever pin my life to a petticoat. I'd as soon think of neglecting the four cautions. The four cautions? said King. What are they? Did you never hear them? replied Dick. Attend, then, and be edified. The four cautions. Pay attention to these cautions, four, and through life you will need little more, should you dole out your days to three score. Beware of a pistol before, before, beware of a pistol before. And when backward his ears are inclined, and his tail with his ham is combined, caution to you will bear in your mind, beware of a prancer behind, 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 beware of a prancer behind. Thirdly, when in the park you may ride, on your best bit of blood, sir, astride, chatting gay to your old friend's young bride, beware of a coach at the side, at the side, at the side, beware of a coach at the side. Lastly, whether in purple or grey, Canter, ranter, grave, solemn, or gay, whate'er he may do, or may say, beware of a priest, every way, every way, every way, 
"'Beware of a priest every way.' "'Well,' said Tom King, "'all you can sing or say don't alter my good opinion of the women. "'Not a secret have I from the girl of my heart. "'She could have sold me over and over again if she had chosen, "'but my sweet Sue is not the wench to do that. "'It is not too late,' said Dick. "'Your Delilah may yet hand you over to the Philistines.' "'Then I shall die in a good cause,' said King. "'But the Tyburn tree has no terrors for me. "'Let better men swing. I'm at liberty. "'I shall never come to the scragging post, "'unless you turn topsman Dick Turpin. "'My nativity has been cast, "'and the stars have declared I am to die by the hand of my best friend. "'And that's you, eh, Dick?' "'It sounds like it,' replied Turpin. "'But I advise you not to become too intimate with Jack Ketch. "'He may prove your best friend after all.' "'Why, faith, that's true,' replied King, laughing. "'And if I must ride backwards up Holborn Hill, "'I'll do the thing in style, "'and honest Jack Ketch shall never want his dues. "'A man should always die game. "'We none of us know how soon our turn may come, "'but come when it will, I shall never flinch from it. "'As the highwayman's life is the fullest of zest, "'so the highwayman's death is the briefest and best. "'He dies not as other men die, by degrees.' "'but at once, without flinching, and quite at his ease. "'As the song you are so fond of says, "'When I die, it will not be of consumption, "'and if the surgeon's knife must come near me, "'it will be after death. "'There's some comfort in that reflection at all events.' "'True,' replied Turpin, "'and, with a little alteration, my song would suit you capitally. "'There is not a king should you search the world round, "'so blithe as the king's king, Tom King, to be found.' "'Dear woman's his empire, each girl is his own, "'and he'd have a long reign if he let him alone. "'Ha, ha, 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 laughed Tom. "'And now, Dick, to change the subject, "'you are off, I understand, to Yorkshire to-night. "'Pon my soul, you are a wonderful fellow, "'an alibi personified, here and everywhere at the same time. "'No wonder you are called the flying highwayman. "'Today in town, tomorrow at York, the day after Chester.' "'The devil only knows where you will pitch your quarters a week hence. "'There are rumours of you in all counties at the same moment. "'This man swears you robbed him at Hounslow, that on Salisbury Plain, "'while another avers you monopolised Cheshire and Yorkshire, "'and that it isn't safe even to hunt without pops in your pocket. "'I heard some devilish good stories of you at Docindars to the day. "'The fellow who told them to me little thought I was a brother blade.' "'You flatter me,' said Dick, smiling complacently. "'But it's no merit of mine. "'Black Bess alone enables me to do it, and hers be the credit. "'Talking of being everywhere at the same time, "'you shall hear what she once did for me in Cheshire. "'Meantime, a glass to the best mare in England. "'You won't refuse that toast, Tom. "'Ah, if your mistress is only as true to you as my nag to me, "'you might set at naught the tightest hemp and cravat that was ever twisted, "'and defy your best friend to hurt you. "'Black Bess, and God bless her, and now for the song.' "'Saying which,' With much emotion, Turpin chanted the following rhymes. Black Bess Let the lover his mistress's beauty rehearse, And laud her attractions in languishing verse, Be it mine in rude strains, but with truth to express, The love I bear to my bonny Black Bess. From the west was her dam, from the east was her sire, From the one came her swiftness, the other her fire. No peer of the realm better blood can possess Than flows in the reins of my bonny black bess. Look, look, how that eyeball grows bright as a brand. That neck proudly arches, those nostrils expand. Mark that wide-flowing mane of which each silky tress Might adorn prouder beauties, though none like black bess. Mark that skin sleek as velvet and dusky as night, With its jet undisfigured by one lock of white. That throat branched with veins, prompt to charge or caress. Now is she not beautiful, bonny Black Bess? Over highway and byway, in rough and smooth weather, Some thousands of miles have we journeyed together, Our coach the same straw, and our meal the same mess, No couple more constant than I and Black Bess. By moonlight, in darkness, by night or by day, Her headlong career there is nothing can stay, She cares not for distance, she knows not distress, "'Can you show me a courser to match with Black Bess?' "'Egad, I should think not!' exclaimed King. "'You are as sentimental on the subject of your mare "'as I am when I think of my darling Susan. "'But pardon my interruption. Pray proceed.' 
"'Let me first clear my throat,' returned Dick. <clears throat> "'And now to resume. "'Once it happened in Cheshire, near Dunham, I popped, "'on a horseman alone, whom I speedily stopped. "'That I lightened his pockets you'll readily guess. "'Quick work makes Dick Turpin when mounted on Bess. "'Now it seems the man knew me. "'Dick Turpin,' said he, "'you shall swing for this job as you live, do you see?' I laughed at his threats and his vows of redress. I was sure of an alibi then with Black Bess. The road was a hollow, a sunken ravine, overshadowed completely by wood like a screen. I clambered the bank, and I need must confess that one touch of the spur grazed the side of Black Bess. Brake brook, meadow and ploughed field Bess fleetly bestrode. As the crow wings her flight, we selected our road. We arrived at Hoff Green in five minutes or less. My neck it was saved by the speed of Black Bess. Stepping carelessly forward, I lounged on the green, taking excellent care that by all I am seen, some remarks on time's flight to the squires I address. But I say not a word of the flight of Black Bess. I mention the hour. It was just about four. Play a rubber at bowls. Think the danger is o'er. When athwart my next game, like a checkmate at chess, comes the horseman in search of the rider of Bess. What matter details? Off with triumph I came. He swears to the hour, and the squires swear the same. I have robbed him at four. While at four, they profess, I was quietly bowling. All thanks to Black Bess. Then one hulu, boys, one loud cheering hulu, to the swiftest of courses, the gallant, the true. For the sportsman unborn shall the memory bless of the horse of the highwayman, Bonnie Black Bess. Loud acclamations rewarded Dick's performance. Awakened from his doze, Zorro asked to beat time to the melody, the only thing, Jerry said, he was capable of beating in his present shattered condition. After some little persuasion, the Magus was prevailed upon to enliven the company with a strain, which he trolled forth after a maudlin manner. The double cross. The all of us have heard of crossed fights, and certain gains by certain lost fights. I rather fancies that it's news how in a mill both men should lose. For where the odds are thus made even, it plays the Dickens with the Stephen. Besides, against all rule they're sinning, where neither has no chance of winning. To milling coves, each vide a vake, where back to fight for heavy stake. But in the meantime so it was, both kids agreed to play across. Bold came each buffer to the scratch, to make it look a tightest match, they peeled in style, and bets were making. T'was six to four, but few were taking. Quite cautiously the mill began, for neither knew the other's plan. Each cull completely in the dark, if what might be his neighbour's mark. Resolve his fibbing not to mind, nor yet to pay him back in kind. So on each other kept they tout, and sparred a bit, and dodged about. With mollies raised, Tom bent his back as if to plant a heavy thwack, vile gem with neat left-handed stopper, straight threatened Tommy with a topper. Tis all my eye, no claret flows, no faces sound, no smashing blows. Five minutes pass, yet not a hit. How can it end, pals? Wait a bit. Each cove was teased with double duty, to please his backers, yet play booty. Then, luckily for gem, a teller was planted right upon his smeller. Down dropped he, stunned, when time was called. Seconds in vain, the seconds bawled. The mill is o'er, the cross are crossed. The losers won, the winners lost. The party assumed once more a lively air, and the glass was circulated so freely that at last a final charge drained the ample bowl of its contents. The best of friends must part, said Dick, and I would willingly order another whiff of punch, but I think we have all had enough to satisfy us, as you milling coves have it, Zori. Your one eye has got a drop in it already, old fellow, and to speak the truth, I must be getting into the saddle without more delay, for I have a long ride before me. And now, friend Jerry, before I start, suppose you tip us one of your merry staves. We haven't heard your pipe today, and never a cross cove of us can throw off so prime a chant as yourself. A song! A song! Aye, a song! reiterated King and the Magus. "'You do me too much honour, Jemmen, said Jerry, modestly taking a pinch of snuff. "'I am sure I shall be most happy. My chants are all of a sort. You must make all due allowances.' And clearing his throat, he forthwith 
warbled the modern greek Ahem. come gem and name and make your game see round the ball is spinning black red or blue the colours view une dieu sank tis beginning then make your game the colour name while round the ball is spinning this sleight of hand my flat shall land while covered in my bonnet i plant my ball and boldly call come make your game upon it thus rat-a-tat i land my flat tis black not red is winning at gay roulette was never met a lance like mine for bleeding i'm ne'er at fault at nothing halt all other legs proceeding to all awake i never shake a mag unless i nip it blind hooky sees how well i sneeze the well-packed cards in shuffling ecarte whist i never missed and nick the broads while ruffling mogul or loo the same i do i am down to trumps as trip it french hazard tain i nick the main was ne'er so prime a caster no crabs for me i'm fly d'ye see the bank shall change its master seven quatre trois the stakes are high ten mains ten mains are mine pals at rouge et noir you hell it choir i make no bones of stripping one glorious coup for me shall do while they may deal each pippin trontoon i pray ne'er clogs my way the game the game's divine pals at billiards set i make my bet i'll score and win the rub pals i'll miss my cue my hazard too but yet my foe i'll drub pals that cannon twist i ne'er had missed unless to suit my views pals to make all right the match look tight this trick you know is done pals but now be gay i'll show my play hurrah the game is won pals no hand so fine no wrist like mine no odds i e'er refuse pals then choose your game whate'er you name to me i like all offers chic hazard whist whate'er you list replenish quick your coffers thus rat-a-tat i land my flat to every purse i speak pals cramped boxes where all's right and fair barred balls i bar when goaded the juice is ace is out of place the juice a die is loaded then make your game your colour name success attend the greek pals bravo jerry bravissimo chorused the party and now pals farewell a long farewell said dick in a tone of theatrical valediction as i said before the best friends must separate may we soon meet again or we now may part for ever we cannot command our luck but we may make the best of the span allotted to us you have your game to play i have mine may each of us meet with the success he deserves egad i hope not said king i'm afraid in that case the chances will be against us well then the success we anticipate if you prefer it rejoined dick i have only to observe one thing more namely that i must insist upon standing sam upon the present occupation not a word i won't hear a syllable landlord i say what o continued dick stepping out of the arbor here my old admiral of the white what's the reckoning what's to pay i say let ye know directly sir replied mine host of the falstaff order my horse the black mare added dick and mine said king the sorrel colt i'll ride with you a mile or two on the road dick perhaps we may stumble upon something very likely we meet at twelve a docindage jerry said king if nothing happens agreed responded juniper what say you to a rubber of bulls in the meantime said the magus taking his everlasting pipe from his lips jerry nodded acquiescence and while they went in search of the implements of the game turpin and king sauntered gently on the green it was a delicious evening. The sun was slowly declining, and glowed like a ball of fire amid the thick foliage of a neighbouring elm. Whether, like the robber moor, Tom King was touched by this glorious sunset, we pretend not to determine. Certain it was that a shade of inexpressible melancholy passed across his handsome countenance, as he gazed in the direction of Harrow on the Hill, which, lying to the west of the green upon which they walked, stood out with its pointed spire and lofty college against the ruddy sky he spoke not but dick noticed the passing emotion what ails you tom said he with much kindness of manner are you not well lad yes i am well enough said king i know not what came over me but looking at harrow i thought of my school days and what i was then and that bright prospect reminded me of my boyish hopes tut tut said dick 
"'This is idle. You're a man now.' "'I know I am,' replied Tom. "'But I have been a boy. Had I any faith in presentiments, I should say this is the last sunset I shall ever see.' "'Here comes our host,' said Dick, smiling. "'I've no presentiment that this is the last bill I shall ever pay.' The bill was brought and settled. As Turpin paid it, the man's conduct was singular, and awakened his suspicions. "'Are our horses ready?' asked Dick quickly. "'They are, sir,' said the landlord. "'Let us be gone,' whispered Dick to King. "'I don't like this fellow's manner. I thought I heard a carriage draw up at the inn door just now. There may be danger. Be fly,' added he to Jerry and the Magus. "'Now, sir,' he said to the landlord, "'lead the way. Keep on the alert, Tom.' Dick's hint was not lost upon the two bowlers. They watched their comrades and listened intently for any manifestation of alarm. End of chapter 2, book 4